Manhattan, one of the most traffic congested cities in the country. The city that invented the word gridlock. Here in the heart of darkness for traffic congestion, midtown at Times Square, the roads can only fit about 9,000 moving vehicles before they become gridlocked. Unfortunately, some 20,000 vehicles may be trying to navigate these streets during an evening rush hour. You get traffic congestion if you have more people trying to reach a certain destination and the capacity just isn't there. Professor Anna Nagurney is an expert on transportation networks and has studied traffic for more than 20 years. How long have we had traffic? Amazingly, we've had problems with traffic going back to ancient times. Ancient times. They didn't have cars back then. No, but they certainly had chariots. Julius Caesar decided it was just too crowded in downtown huh? Rome, and he instituted a policy whereby they would have only certain amounts of chariots entering the city. Did it work? It did work. In ancient Rome, they managed traffic by restricting vehicles during the busiest times, while in other cities, like Dallas, there's something building more roads. In fact, since 2000, we've built enough new lane miles to circle the globe four times. But not everyone agrees that adding roads is the best solution. For years and years, people would build more roads thinking, oh, if you build more roads, that has to improve the efficiency to the network. Actually, that wasn't what was happening. It comes down to a paradox discovered in the 1960s by German mathematician Dietrich Bryce. And it may sound illogical at first. In a world where people are trying to go as fast as they can from one place to another, Bryce realized that having more options can actually lead us astray. The Bryce paradox is when you add a road and you think you've improved the situation for the travelers because you give them another option. But actually, the travel time gets higher. So suppose drivers want to get from the suburbs to the city. They have two possible routes, Highway 1 and Highway 2. Each takes about an hour. Traffic will most likely be split evenly between the two highways. Now, what if you add another highway in the middle that shortens the distance of the trip, Highway 3? It could get you to the city in half an hour. But now you want to take it, your neighbor wants to take it, everybody wants to take Highway 3. Soon it's clogged with traffic and drivers are worse off than before. It's taking people longer to get to work, longer to get home. So the inverse of that is that if you take away a road, then it actually improves the efficiency of the network. Exactly. Here on the island of Manhattan, where there's just no room to build new roads, they're putting Dietrich Bryce's theory to the test. They're dealing with congestion by removing one of their busiest streets, Broadway, right here in Times Square. Broadway crosses a grid on a diagonal, so it creates three-way intersections that slow down traffic. Even New York's 19th century urban planners knew the diagonal might be a problem. Broadway was originally intended to run from north to south in a straight line. But a group of property owners were upset that the road would run through their orchards, and they convinced the city to build Broadway in the diagonal path we see today. You have a road that's common to different kinds of paths, and by removing this particular part of Broadway from 47th Street to 42nd Street to vehicles, the traffic actually flows better because you don't have such a complex network. The New York City Department of Transportation used GPS data from taxi cabs to see if traffic really was improving in the notoriously gridlocked Midtown area. Here's a congestion around Times Square in 2008 when cars could travel down Broadway. And then, in 2009, after the street was closed. Overall, travel time had improved by about 7% because drivers had fewer options. It's the moral of Highway 3. And ultimately, the system is the one that'll help you win. We're all in it together.